what you want to hear on a Sunday morning and take the monkeys and I'm a believer. This is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app on your smart speaker and an 88 to 91 FM. We're the BBC News at nine o'clock on Sunday the 30th of April. This is Jason Kay. Good morning to you. The final RAF evacuation flight has left Sudan. Nurses in England will begin another round of strike action this evening with emergency care being hit for the first time. And people watching the coronation will be invited to join in by pledging allegiance to the king. The nurses' strike in England could hit emergency care for the first time when the latest walkout begins at 8 o'clock this evening. The disruption by the Royal College of Nursing will last until tomorrow night. Some ambulance crews and other health workers from the Unite Union will also be taking industrial action. Doctors are warning about the added pressure on already overstretched A&E departments. Jacob Mushlin, a consultant at Bradford Royal Infirmary, says people should seek emergency care only in genuinely life-threatening situations. The hospital and the emergency department is already under a great deal of stress. The impact of this on um, patient care and patient flow through the hospital can't be underestimated. Our nurses are critical members of staff and uh, perform critical tasks that nobody else can do. The government operation to fly out British people caught up in the fighting in Sudan has ended with the final plane leaving an airfield north of the capital last night. About 1,900 people have been flown to safety. Large members of people have also been fled, have also fled to the coastal city of Port Sudan to try to leave the country. Among them is Jamila Al Motasim and her five daughters, who are British citizens. The city is overcrowded with foreigner people, all nationalities. You can't find the room. People are all over the streets, all over the mosques, sleeping on the floors, sleeping outside on the streets. People watching the coronation on Saturday, including television viewers, will be invited to join a chorus of millions to swear allegiance to the king. It's one of a number of changes being made to the ceremony, which will see the king pray out aloud, and non-Christian faith leaders and women bishops participate for the first time. The Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, says that he hoped the service will unite the country. I hope people will sing and raise a glass and say a prayer and join in, and also join in the other things that are happening around the coronation, the street parties, but also on the Monday, the big help out. That again strikes that note of service. It's a time for us all to get stuck in. The Maritime Union, the RMT, has called for an investigation into how a ferry carrying people from the Scottish mainland ran aground off Orkney last night. Smoke was detected in the engine room of the MV Pentalina and the ship was said to have started taking on water. 60 people on board were rescued. The Guardian has apologised to the BBC's outgoing chairman Richard Sharp and to the Jewish community after publishing a cartoon which has been accused of being anti-Semitic. The newspaper said the drawing hadn't met its editorial standards. On Friday, Mr Sharp said he was standing down because he'd failed to declare potential conflicts of interest. Ione Wells reports. The cartoon depicted Mr Sharp holding a box marked Goldman Sachs where he used to work, containing what appears to be a puppet of the Prime Minister and an animal resembling an octopus. One Jewish group said the tropes fell squarely into an anti-Semitic tradition. The former cabinet minister, Sajid Javid, said he was disappointed to see such tropes in The Guardian, while the former Labour MP, Ian Austin, described the cartoon as anti-Semitic and said the paper should be ashamed. The Guardian has apologised to Mr Sharp and removed the cartoon from its website. Cold calls which trick people into buying fake investments are to be banned. There was a crackdown on telephone scams selling bogus pension products in 2019, but the government will set out plans to extend that ban to include all financial products. The communications watchdog Ofcom says up to 41 million adults in the UK were targeted by suspicious calls and texts last summer. The final of the World Snooker Championship will get underway this afternoon at the, uh, the Crucible in Sheffield with England's Mark Selby up against Luca Brassel from Belgium. Selby, who's a four-time champion, withstood a late fight back from Mark Allen of Northern Ireland to seal his place in the early hours. Luca Brassel is the first man from continental Europe to reach the final. Mark Selby says he's pleased to be facing the Belgian. 
Yeah, fantastic. I mean, it's great for him, you know. He's such a good kid uh, and great for snooker as well. I mean, he's like one of the most naturally gifted players you, you'd ever come across. So to see him actually fulfilling his talent is uh, pleasing to see. And the weather, there'll be spells of rain for most places today. Showers will be heavy and thundery towards the west this afternoon. It'll be drier in the southeast. Temperatures should reach 14 Celsius in Edinburgh and Cardiff, 16 in Belfast and 18 in London. That's the BBC News at five past nine. Thank you. It's me, Eve Wright. Live on the BBC Sounds app. BBC Radio 2 Good morning Stay right